This is a bag that I have been wanting for a long time. But you know what? I feel so liberated buying this. I feel so liberated. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, wow. I don't even know how to put this into like, how, how do I even film this video? Because you probably have already seen my video that I did with my very distasteful experience at my local Hermes store. Um, and I now have an Hermes bag to reveal. So, um, it's not what you think. Whatever, we'll get into it. Um, if you are new to my channel and you love luxury and you aren't already subscribed, then I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is twice a week on a Wednesday and on a weekend. I'm usually late on the Wednesday video, but I try to make sure I've always got two videos per week, sometime in that middle of week there. All right, um, let's get this big box. Um, now, you've probably already seen the corner, okay. Let's talk about it. Um, this is an Hermes bag. This is a bag that I have been wanting for a long time. I can say that I feel happy because I definitely do, but I don't have the feeling that I really should. I really should feel the warm and fuzzies and I just don't to a certain degree because of my very horrible experience I had with my local Hermes store. Yeah, I was so put off and um, I'd actually already bought this bag before that even happened. So I bought this bag pre-loved. This is a pre-loved Hermes unboxing and I am very happy that I have it. I am glad that I bought it. I feel liberated that I bought it myself and I didn't wait on the store. Not that they'll probably offer me now, um, but it, it should feel better than what it does. Like I should feel the warm and fuzzies, but I just don't because of what I went through. So I am finding it quite difficult at, at like, I'm finding it difficult at the moment to wrap my head around it because of what had happened and my love for Hermes craftsmanship and their handbags. I love all their handbags and I still do, but there is a certain part of me that feels like it's not the same because of what I went through. Look, for those of you who just are here for unboxings, you know what, whatever, we're going to open this up. I'm going to reveal the bag and we're going to talk details. And for those of you who actually really enjoy my videos and love watching my content, then stick around and once I've revealed the bag, we'll have a chat. But for those who like to complain that my intros are too long or people that just like to watch unboxings, then this is for you. I'm going to open it up. You can have a look at the bag and then if you don't want to know anything else, you can switch off and go to another video. But for my regular viewers, who I love very much, thank you for always supporting me. I cannot, I cannot express my gratitude enough for you guys. Like seriously, you're the freaking bomb. But um, for you, stay, stay tuned till after I do the reveal and we'll have a good old chat. All right, pre-loved Hermes bag unboxing. This is epic. I'm glad that I found this pre-loved for, in retrospect, is a good deal considering the cur current market at the moment. So it did come with everything. I've got the rain covers, two of them. Um, I have the accessories, which we'll open up later so as to not spoil what is in here. Um, I have the care booklet. And we have inside this beautiful, beautiful pre-loved bag that I purchased from a consignment store based in Singapore. Her name is Sia and she is a consignment store called Sia Sia SG underscore my beautiful bags. She is on Instagram so I'll leave her Instagram handle on the screen here but she does also have a showroom and a shop in Singapore so she is a registered business. She is not just someone you know kind of like I don't know how you put it like to someone personally selling stuff. She has a registered business in Singapore, so I definitely trust her, but I always get my handbags authenticated. So I can authenticate my handbags, so I've authenticated this. I can authenticate Hermes handbags. I don't do it as a job because I just don't want the stress of having someone else's responsibility. So people have asked me to do it, but I just don't know if I could, I just don't know if I could go there and create my own authenticating business for Hermes. I don't know if I could do it, but um, I still always get another opinion. So I use real authentication to get that second opinion. And I do also have a $5 referral code for, for real authentication. So you get $5 off your um, authentication order. I'll put the code on the screen and also in the description bar. It's not an affiliate code. It's just just a referral code so you guys save five dollars but yes I did get it 
extra authenticated for extra peace of mind as you should always do whenever you buy pre-loved or buy on the consignment uh, resale market. But lo and behold, I bought, and this is like, when you see it, you will understand why it's like, wow, mind blowing. And there's probably no way I ever would have got this at the store anyway. Have a guess. Do you think that I got a Birkin or a Kelly? For people who are familiar, you probably already know, by the way, I was holding it and the shape of it, but let's just have a guess anyway. You know what? Guess the color. What color did you think that I got? What color? Because, yeah, that's going to be tricky. Okay, let's open it up. Hope you've had all your guesses. I got a Kelly Gold Hardware Epsom Celia, because that's pretty much the main leather you can get for Celia. And the color is Cray. Yes. This is like the hottest color for Hermes right now. Like everyone is going crazy for Cray. I have loved Cray since the very beginning when it first launched. I think this actually came out in autumn, winter 2013. Before, I was always afraid of getting like light colors in Hermes. But then when I got my Cray Bleed 27, that completely opened my eyes to light colors. Like... Even though I always loved the color, I wasn't sure that I would ever be able to own such a light color because I was worried about not so much color transfer, but I was just worrying about like getting marks on it, like accidental marks that can just happen with wear and tear and that sort of thing. It's also very easy to clean with leather cleaner and conditioner. Um, I do have a video on my YouTube on how I clean and care for my Hermes bags, like just spot clean, like just spot cleaning them. Don't come for me. If you stuff up your bag, there is a disclaimer at the start of that video. But yeah, I'll link that down below as well. So yeah, that opened my eyes to light colors. And I was like, you know what? You only live once. So why not go the epic route of getting an elusive Kelly bag in the color Cray? Because of the distasteful experience I had with my local store, I absolutely like love this bag. This is amazing. I'm so happy with it. But there is that little part of me that feels like it's broken the little part inside me that feels like it's been crushed and it's that part that had such a love and passion for Hermes like an I can just an undeniable untainted love that's what I had for Hermes but then when I went th through what I went through with my local store then you know pretty much like I said I felt like it was bullying I felt like they were attacking me and uh, questioning my character and putting me down for even asking for a bag you know they just came for me and it felt so horrible that a big corporation would attack a customer like that a, a customer who'd been loyal for over five years a customer who had an unconditional love for them a customer that would visit on like a regular basis um, I was a bread and butter customer. I wasn't the sort of customer that would just go into the store, you know, try to win over the affection of the sales associates, pump as much money as they could, got the bags that they wanted and then left. I was a long-term customer. I would have kept shopping with them forever because I would rather have shopped Hermes than shopped other brands. But now it's completely switched. Like the light has flicked and now I just don't have the same feeling that I once did. And that is why what should be a really joyous unboxing is not as joyous as it really would have been should that have not happened to me. Basically, the reason I say that they, I felt like they bullied me is because they attacked my character. They said that I was an OHS risk just because I was asking, like, when would I be able to get another bag? Like, does the wait list, is the, am I on the wait list? No one's ever corrected me along the way to say that there is no wait list. No one ever corrected me. And I was attacked and told that I'm all these awful things that, I'm a risk to the health and safety of the, of the sales associate to the store just because I asked. Like, and I wasn't even in the wrong. They are the ones that breached all these things. They are the ones that did the customer uh, privacy breach, not me. Yet I was the one that was attacked. There was no empathy for me whatsoever in how the system seemed unfair. It really did seem unfair and it is unfair. It is a, it was a very unfair system at my local store, but I don't feel like this is going to be worldwide. 
My experience is an exceptional one and it's only relative to my store, but I would like to hope that they can accept and take ownership for where they went wrong, what they did wrong, and take that on the chin and not take that out on me. Because if they had handled it the correct way and had some empathy towards the customer, then it would be completely different. There's no way that the top tier Hermes head office like France would ever have authorized such a thing to happen. I feel like they would not have allowed that to happen. So I'm gonna say that there's no way that this sh would be relative to anywhere else in the world, but there is still that possibility it's relative to other stores in Australia based on the hierarchy that they have. And that is why this is a very weird unboxing video because I bought this bag before all of this happened. Um, because I had to wait, when I sent the money to um, the Singaporean consignment store, CSCASG, we had to wait for it to clear and for her to like get it into her bank account. And in that time period of waiting about five business days, that is when I got the horrible call from Hermes uh, HR to harass me. Um, so even when this transaction was pending, I had this horrible feeling in my stomach, like I've just bought even though I bought a bag from, not from the store directly, I just felt like there was this point where I just wanted to sell everything that was Hermes. Like I wanted to sell all my, all my, I wanted to sell all my bags and get rid of them and just was be done with them and just never look at them again. There was a point where I really wanted to do that. And then um, I was reading, I think I remember reading this article in Vogue um, and it was about this Hermes collector who collects just the handbags because um, she sees them as works of art, their investments. She likes collecting the rare ones and she doesn't just, she hardly buys from the store. She just goes like and hunts them pre-loved and she enjoys the hunt because she likes looking for the good deals. She has connections where she could just go and get whatever bag she wanted and pay the premium for it, but she prefers hunting for a good deal. And when I read that story in Vogue, I was like, that sounds like me. Like, that's how I am. You know, I like looking for a good deal. I like looking, like getting the bags that are more like hard to get, you know, that sort of thing. I like, you know, I really want to get a suede, a Dobless Hermes bag. Um, yeah, I like the unique bags. So when I read that, I, I just kind of took a step back and went, you know what? I think that I can draw that line and still be like happy about buying their handbags because I do love the craftsmanship, but I make the decision to no longer shop at the actual store. Possibility I might buy from the Hermes Australia store. Possibility if something comes up online that I really want, a handbag most likely, or perhaps a Rodeo charm. But I can tell you now, my eyes wander elsewhere now for other things like shoes. I used to totally only like to buy the Hermes Arans and now I'm looking at other brands for sandals. Um, Twillies, I'm even thinking, should I look at other Twilly brands, even though Hermes does the best silk, but, and it wasn't even, I was buying them just because I wanted to score a bag, it was because I really love Hermes, like, I love everything that they had. I, I loved everything that they had. But it's different now, it's definitely different. But, um, you probably want to know details, you know, for anyone who was only here for the unboxing and didn't really care about the other stuff, you probably already clicked out by now. If you haven't, then thanks for sticking around. You're probably like, what? Um, but I did get some other accessories with it, of course. So let me pop that down and let me show you what else it came with. Cause it was actually a full set. This bag was a complete set. Um, I got the receipt, but the receipt was completely faded. So it's pretty much illegible, which is a little bit unfortunate because I like to have the receipt, but it's not a deal breaker. So I'm okay with that. So it came with the clochette. The clochet is where the keys stay in and that is the lock and also has the dust bag for it which is good and it looks like this has been unused anyway it's still got the um, plastic wrap around it which is the same as me I don't tend to use the lock and clochet especially on Epsom where I feel like it can get scratched relatively oh, easy if you have natural nails or if you drop the bag it gets scratched so I wouldn't use a lock on the um, on Epsom leather, on a Kelly bag, on a Celia especially because it's so firm and rigid, but I would potentially use the clochette. And then there's also the strap. So it looks like the previous owner was actually using the strap with the um, stickers on the hardware, which is uh, interesting, very interesting, kind of cute because it's like, all right, you were that precious with the bag that you left that on. Uh, but each to their own if you want to leave the hardware sticker on. Luckily, it hasn't had any corrosion or anything underneath, so it still looks okay. There's a little bit of a line just there where like the sticker was, but it does rub away anyway, thankfully. 
because that would be a bit annoying. But yeah, that's why I just don't leave your stickers on. Don't, especially on the straps. If they're peeling, take them off because dust and dirt gets in and it's going to cause tarnish. See, this one's even worse. Let me show you. It does come off though. Tarnish can be removed anyway with um, the worst case scenario, you can use a polish for it. But I just recommend using like a cloth, like a microfiber lint cloth. And then next step would be a, a polishing cloth. And then worst case scenario, you could use an actual proper um, uh, polish, like a liquid polish. Worst case scenario. But this bag is not very old. I believe that it's actually an X stamp bag, which would make it 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now, there is still stickers on the actual hardware itself. Now, however, I probably would want to take this off. But sometimes I like to leave it on as well until it starts to peel. And it doesn't look like it's peeling yet. Like it's not starting to peel back or anything. The thing is, is that Cray Celia Kelly 28 is a very epic combo. It is extremely sought after. When I inquired to actually buy this bag, um, I, I found the listing on her, like on her Instagram. And then I contacted her like within less than an hour of it being up. And then after I contacted her, she had multiple other people contacting her. But I told her that I actually have a YouTube channel and I will do the reveal on my YouTube as well. So that gave me some brownie points, thankfully. So she was able to hold the bag for me and allow me some time to make the decision. She gave me the first right of refusal. So if I didn't want the bag, she held it for me until I was ready to say no, I didn't want it. But she did have a heap of other buyers lined up that, that were actually based in Singapore. She's a really honorable person. So if you were very serious to buy a bag, I feel like she would always just give you the right of refusal first anyway, if you were the first one to contact, providing you didn't just like ghost her and not reply for like ages and ages. Like I was very responsive. So she knew I was very keen, but yeah, she was amazing to deal with. She was so friendly, so nice, very patient, gave me lots of photos, lots of videos. So I was really happy with the service that I got from her. Sia, very, very friendly lady, highly recommend her. I do also have a video on my channel of all the places that I do buy my Hermes bags aside from the Hermes store. So I will link that down below too. This is my first purchase from Sia. So I definitely want to give her accolades for being so fantastic and so patient and allowing me the time to make the decision before you know, just selling it to someone else because so many people wanted to get this bag. I am just gonna take off the stickers here because I noticed that there is still stickers on the turn lock. Oh my gosh. Like, this is just too extreme. Don't leave your stickers on like when they're starting to peel and stuff. Like I, I'm okay when people just leave it on when they're not starting to peel, like, and they look like they haven't got any air coming in underneath, but in places like the turn lock, the straps, definitely you gotta take it off because it just leaves like, yeah, it just leaves, like it can tarnish, you know? And if you don't know how to fix that, then you could be stuck with tarnish until you send it to the Hermes spa. Um, all right, now this video is a little bit all over the place. I'm sorry, it's uh, everywhere because <clears throat> this flower, but I am very happy that I got this bag. How much did I pay? All right, the average going rate for a Kelly 28 or even a Kelly 25 in the color cray in cellular, which is the outside stitch. As you can see, the stitching is on the outside and that's why it looks very rigid and very structured. The average price of this kind of spec or the same spec color, you know, leather hardware in a Kelly 25 goes for around about 28,000 to 29,000 brand new. So if it's brand new, you're looking at about 28 to 29,000 Singaporean dollars, which pretty much translate to the same price in Australian dollars. That's what you're looking at brand new because this was a pre-loved bag. And I'll show you some other things that are a little bit of flaws, but just minor. Um, I didn't pay as much and I was happy with that because even though there are some minor flaws to it, there is a bigger saving to be made. So I paid 22 and a half thousand dollars Australian. I know it's a lot of money, um, but I saved technically in retrospect six and a half thousand dollars if I were to buy it brand new in the resale market. Six and a half thousand dollars is a massive saving to accept some minor flaws and accept the fact that it's a slightly older stamped bag. I actually just had a look at the stamp, so it is an X stamp, and I actually just double checked. X is actually 2016, so it is actually a five year old bag. So the price. Considering the resale market right now has completely blown up because of the pandemic 
France is not able to produce as much stock. People can't travel overseas to try and score in Europe for that lesser retail price. So the resale market has completely blown up. Like, yeah, it, it, people are getting even buyout offers on Fashion File. People are getting some really decent offers if you happen to have scored a bag from the Hermes store. That's how much the resale market has, has blown up since the pandemic. So like I said, $22,500 Australian, but the retail price on this would have been at the store just under $17,000 Australian. So I paid $5,500 over retail. I'd say about five and a half to $6,000 over retail, but well, less than 6,000, you know? But think of it this way, what I just told you, I spent $27,000 at the store of my own money. They claim that there is no link selling, that it doesn't matter what you spend, you make a wish with the store and you wait. I'm gonna give them and say, you know what? Fine, there's no link selling. But needless to say, um, we're all entitled to our own interpretation. And um, I would think that spending money is a sign of loyalty. And um, they usually like to offer their bags to people that are loyal. And I would certainly have thought that I was loyal after five years of shopping with the store and having spent a lot of money, almost $100,000 not counting bags. Um, but apparently, whatever, whatever decision they made, they didn't like me, the store manager didn't like me. I know for a fact that he had me blocked on Instagram. I didn't even know who he was on Instagram, I had no idea. I just happened to chance upon it because someone else happened to tag him. And then I clicked on his profile because I knew who he was, what he looked like. And lo and behold, he blocked me. I was like, what? Who blocks someone on Instagram when they've done nothing to you? But he did. So yeah, um, almost $6,000 over retail. I spent a lot more money at the store. If I could turn back time after what I went through, I wouldn't have spent that money. Because of what I went through, all the items that I bought now feel like they weren't worth it because they left a bad, it left a bad taste in my mouth. It made, it broke a part of me that had that passion and love for Hermes, what I, like the experience that I went through. So if I'm being completely honest, if you can find reputable consignment stores, like I feel like the ones I deal with are quite reputable. I trust them. They also accept PayPal as well. Um, some of them will only accept friends and family, but some of them will do PayPal invoice. Um, they have registered businesses. You could just go to Singapore and buy from them, you know, uh, pay, uh, pay for it on the spot on your credit card. They have registered businesses. You could just fly there and make an appointment and buy your bag. Um, but then there are other reputable consignment stores like Fashion File, absolutely amazing Fashion File, you know. Um, Vestia Collective, I trust their authentication process for Hermes. They are in the heart of, you know, they're in France, they're in Paris. So I'm pretty sure they've experienced their fair share of Hermes bags. So I definitely trust Vestia Collective as well. So I feel like, in a nutshell, sometimes it's just really better overall to go the pre-loved consignment route. But I think this is also depends on what sort of bag you're after, what size you're after. Perhaps if you're only after like a Kelly 32 or Birkin 35, it is probably better to just go through the store um, if you want a brand new bag, you know? But if you're okay with pre-loved, there are some great savings to be had on the bigger bags because they're not as sought after now. And like I said, not every experience is the same. All around the world, there can be different experiences. Like in the US, I've heard that there are quite a lot of stores that don't even make you like spend much to show loyalty or don't even need you to really buy anything, you know, that sort of thing. I do need a bag insert. Now, there is some marks inside the bag because it looks like the person didn't use an insert inside the bag. So I'm not sure if I can really get it to show on camera, but there is a black mark just over at the back here. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to show you the condition of the bag. So yeah, there is some marks inside the bag, but I'm gonna use my Seven Rue Paradise insert for now. This is in the Kelly 25 size. I do need a Kelly 28 Celia 7RP insert, and I am um, going to order one. However, they have told me that their atelier is really, really backed up at the moment, but I'm just gonna use this inside so it's at least got some more sort of protection, that sort of thing. Um, if you do want to get a 7RP insert, I still have my coupon code, which is POF30 to get 30 euro off. Or if you happen to need two inserts, I've got a code to get 70 euro off, which is POF70. Uh, all the details will be in the description bar down below. I'm also going to link any Kelly 
28, 25 cilia bags that are neutral that I see on Vestia Collective or Fashion File. I will link them down below because like I said, you can get some relatively good deals considering that some people are in areas of the world where it's so competitive and it's really hard to get an offer from the store or they don't have many boutiques. Like here, we've only got five boutiques in all of our country so and there are other countries that are the same as well so i'm going to link some down below that i think are relatively good deals considering you know the market value right now has increased but i'm going to show you some other things that are some little bits of wear and tear on the bag now at the back of the bag there are these little like uh scratches if this is going to focus in So there is a little scratch just there, and then there's a scratch just over there. So it is going to need to go to the Hermes Spa eventually. There is also some corner wear, which is expected with a bag that's like five years old. So that's how the corners look. A little bit of corner wear, but it's not really major. Um, that is it. That is all. So yeah, very strange unboxing video, I know. But I am very happy that I have this bag. Um, I did want a Kelly 28 because I'm kind of... Like, I have my Kelly 25, but I'm kind of like, I wouldn't rule out getting another Kelly 25. But the thing is, if I got a Kelly 25 in Celia, which I've had before, the capacity is much less than a Kelly 25 in return. So, I thought that, so I didn't really get much of a capacity loss. I'd rather have gone for the Kelly 28. If there was a Kelly 25 that ended up being the same price, oh, I don't know. Would I still go the Kelly 28? I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe I'd probably go the Kelly 25, but nonetheless, I still wanted to get a Kelly 28. I knew that I needed one in my collection because I got the Birkin 30, now I got the Kelly 28, and then I got the Kelly 25. So it really does round out the collection, I feel. And I'm moving more towards bigger bags anyway. Um, I'm kind of just over the really small mini bag thing. So yeah, I next potentially want to get a Birkin 35. That's how I feel, because I just feel like I just want bigger bags. I actually forgot that I have some stuff to show you guys that I got from Inner Bag Shop. Uh, Inner Bag Shop is an Instagram store. She is based in Hong Kong. She has a lot of her products made in Korea, and then she ships them from Hong Kong. But she makes some amazing stuff. So she did send me these for free, very kindly gifted. Uh, but this part isn't sponsored or anything. I just love her stuff. Like, she just does some really cool nifty things. So I'll show you first this little stuff that she gave me. So she sent me these uh, like ring attachments. Basically, you put them inside your Birkin or if you have a Kelly pochette, inside the actual sangle part. So I'll show you with my Kelly as an example. Uh, basically, if you have like a Birkin, oh, this is probably not a good idea, but if you have a Birkin or a Kelly pochette, you wanna take these sangles out and then you weave this in towards the back and then they'll sit like that. So that's how you can kind of, so you can pretty much attach a shoulder strap to your Birkin. So she sent me those. They are really, really cool. Um, I have a Birkin 30 and I, would, I wouldn't actually use these with the strap for a long period. I would just attach them and have them as an option in case, say, you needed to just for like a few minutes put your bag on your shoulder, then I feel like these are a good kind of option to have, but they definitely are not recommended for long periods because they will stretch out the actual leather of your sangles, bearing the weight. And especially if you have a lot of stuff in your bag, then do not even bother using these. If you're carrying very heavy things in your bag, don't bother because you will just potentially um, stretch out your sangles and potentially damage your bag. But if you don't carry much, especially if you've got like a Birkin 25, then these are really cool to put inside the um, sangles so that way you can attach a shoulder strap. So that's those. If you need to order anything that I'm showing you, just DM her on Instagram. Uh, she sometimes might be a bit slow to respond uh, if she's getting a lot of requests. So if you don't get a response after say like 48 hours, just send her another message again because sometimes I notice that her colleague reads it and he doesn't speak English. So, but Joyce, the owner, she does. Um, but she also sent me um, some Constance wallet protector stickers because I do have a Constance wallet that I turned into a Constance to go using her little hacks. I'll leave the video to that down below or just search in my YouTube channel, uh, Constance to go. But yeah, these are the stickers here. So that way you can just protect the buckle. The Constance buckle is the only one that I like to protect, but I will always take off the stickers once they're starting to peel. I have some really cool nifty straps. 
So we'll start off with this one first. This is a long strap. I can't remember what length I got, maybe like 110 centimeters or something like that. And this is in the color Cray. So it does sort of relatively match. Um, it's pretty close match in my opinion. Yep, it's pretty, pretty close. The only difference is that the glazing that they use is white, but the glazing on Cray is actually beige. So that's the only part that doesn't really match. So I could actually now use this bag as a crossbody bag. I think it was like 2.5 centimeters, but she does have varying thicknesses. So you can get like uh, 1.2, 2.5, three centimeters, that sort of thing. Uh, the other one I got is um, another strap, same thickness. I think the length is about the same as well. And it's to match my Gris Asphalt Kelly. And this, as you can see, is a bit lighter, but it is still a relatively close match. Like it's still pretty, pretty close. And this is also so I can use this bag crossbody. And I have canvas straps from her as well that I use these, um, that I use on this bag to go crossbody. And that takes me on to the last one that she gave me. And that is a strap. And I think I got this in 60 centimeters. This is actually for the Picatin. So how this works is, so you've got these tabs here. You take this off, you put it on the straps of your Picatin. Now my Picatin is in blue pale, so it's pretty much impossible to match. Like, But if you have a black Picatin or a gold Picatin, yeah, you will find a match, no problem. There is definitely a leather match. But now I can actually use my Picatin like without attaching it to the gold hardware because before I was attaching a strap here to the gold hardware but I was worried about the hardware really getting scratched up. Also, I felt that it was um, compromising the closure of the Picatin, like it was making it a bit more open. But this way, it actually keeps the Picatin together. Like look at that, the Picatin stays more closer together so you're not having to worry about the security of the bag because I kind of was a bit paranoid, and that is how it looks. But this was a very long-winded video, I know, but for those of you who love my channel, who like my content, who love my honesty, I know that you guys would have watched through to the end, but for the people that don't care for me, then you probably already switched off, so we don't have to worry about saying goodbye to you. But yeah, that is it. Thank you very much for watching, and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you love my honesty, and I love you guys for your support. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.